So what I want to talk about is the one issue that many of us have faced when we were younger, when we were older, even now. Bullying. What is bullying? It's, it's something that's always there. But the issue is to control it. How does this generation affect the next gener generation? I want to talk about fear. What is fear? It's being afraid, it's being frightened, it's being anxious. You, you know that, you know what fear is, but what's the definition of fear? What is the true meaning of fear? It's an experience, specific pain or emotion that, want, that makes you want to flee from danger. And the thing is, bullying, it happens everywhere. You're always going to be afraid of someone or something and you're never really truly escaped it unless someone can help you. So what we're about is how can we change the laws of bullying? Here in the U.S. you have news talking about race, your religion, your sexuality, your preference of life. You're judged on that all the time. Here I'm standing, I'm an Asian American, but I used to be a Buddhist and a Christian. I'm judged on that. I'm eight years old. I'm at a conference full of adults. I could be judged on that. But the thing is, you have one thing that no one's ever going to take from you. And that's your voice. Bullying is not, it's a form of retaliation of anger and sadness. That's what bullying is. But how are we going to accept it? How, as people in general, are we going to accept bullying? by social warning, by people changing the way they think, the way how, the way they react towards bullying, how, the way how school systems change towards that, the way how educators can react towards that, the way the parents can even react towards that. I go to a public school here in Fort Wayne. Last year, I met this kid, Caleb Knoll. September 30th, of 2010, he committed suicide because he was being bullied of gay. That's not right, is it? No, it's not. You shouldn't be bullied because of your preference of your sexuality or anything for that. Think about mine. It's someone that I wish I could have more. Someone that I could have saved him. But the thing is, you're always going to have bullying no matter what. Because that's, it's going to be there, but the thing is, what can you do to change it? My issue is, how can I get into school systems? How, could I can, how can we talk to teachers? How can they handle it? You have principals that hear about situations like that, and how, how does a school react to that? My school reacted to doing a prayer in the morning for him, and it was like it never happened. We did a candlelight service for him. When I, but then the police officers kicked us out of the, the steps because they, they said that it wasn't right, that they should give him respect. And the thing is, it made me so mad because they were shutting down a voice, our voice. Our voice is something. My plan in the future is one day to make it all the way to Congress, to change laws about bullying, not just bullying itself, cyberbullying. Like, when you look at Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, any, any social media, it, you're always going to escape, how do you say it? You're always going to escape for that moment. But let's say you're in school, a student, and you're being bullied at school, and, and let's say no one really likes you at your lunch table, and they're friends with you on Facebook, or they're friends with you on Facebook. When you're at school, you face all the dangers and fears of that, but then when you're at home, you lose your comfort. You lose, you lose your safe place. Because social media and social networking, it's there and they're there to attack you. How are you going to change that? I can talk about bullying and I can talk about, oh, we can do this, we can do that. But really what we need to do is bring the community together. Talk to the educators, talk to the principals, talk to the teachers, talk to the police officers instead, talk to people who can make us and mandate them. That's why we should bring it to Congress. We should change the laws on cyberbullying. We should change the laws on bullying itself. 
but it takes not one person. It doesn't take two people. It takes social reformity in bringing people together, bringing people to open their eyes and actually realize that we're all the same people. The world is not black and white. The world is full of color. Unless you're colorblind, and that's one thing. But it's full of color. My skin is tan, and yet I go tanning. But I'm an Asian American. Over there, her skin is darker than mine. She must be African. Over there, Caucasian, your skin is white. And the thing is, we're all the same, because we're human beings, and we shouldn't live in fear. No one is to live in fear and face our fears and dangers alone. That's not what we do. As a community, you bring the people together. As a community, you bring the teachers and the students and everyone who's involved together to make one solution, and that's to bring peace. Not just peace alone, but so that when you walk through the school, when you walk through the streets, the campus, you're not living in fear anymore. You're not living in fear of who you are, or what you want to be in life, or your, or anything. You're making a life. You're making a difference. When I was younger, I, I didn't really know what my religion really was. I grew up in the Buddhist religion. My my family from Burma. You know, I had family in Thailand, and and the thing is, I grew up being a Buddhist. But I found my way through Christianity, and that's my religion. My community, my, the Burmese community didn't accept that. But do you know what made me face it? It's having people there. It's having people help me find a voice and not be afraid of being what I am. So I encourage everyone just to look next to you and be like, I love you. I love who you are. I don't care if you're white, black, tan, yellow. I don't care if you're gay, straight, anything. Because the person next to you is someone that's worth living, worth breathing, worth being cared for. And the only way to solve our fears and our emotions that we have towards people is to make a solution, to get together and make what can we do to make you happy? What can we do to make you safer? So I encourage everyone just to look and just say, I love you. <laughs> Thank you.